Hey gang, it's your boy. And oh my god, there are updates on the Toronto Turd Flinger. Like an update or whatever? Now I was under the mistaken impression that Wednesday was the day that Samuel Apoku was supposed to be seen in court, but that was Tuesday. So to lead up to that, I was researching articles, looking for video clips, to prepare myself for this video. And although I didn't find much, there was this news segment from Global News, which is one of the major Canadian broadcasters. Now I know it's not CP24 with her boy Steve, but there are clips of him later, and we'll get to that. Now in this news segment, they rehash some of the stuff we've already covered in the previous videos, which I've added to a playlist for convenience for those who want to catch up. So we get to see Opoku's lawyer speaking with journalists. Oh my god, look, it's Steve! There were some other interviews also with university types, but it's, as you'd expect, just more of the same. I feel like everyone's just a little relieved that we can focus on our studies as exams are coming up. Now, I'm not entirely sure how to gender this person, and I live in Canada, so I have to be careful with that. But no worries, AirPods. You can take your women's studies course exams without fear of distraction. Those court documents also show that the accused violated the terms of his probation twice. What's this? Violating probation? Hmm. Well, that leads us over to the globalnews.ca website where we find this article which tells us that court documents obtained by Global News show that Opoku was convicted of criminal harassment in 2017 in Hamilton, Ontario. He was given a suspended sentence and two years probation. As a result of this, he also had to submit his DNA to the DNA data bank and was given a lifetime weapons prohibition. Since being sentenced, he was also convicted twice for failing to comply with his probation. So, Opoku's lawyer's got his work cut out for him, because there's not going to be a heck of a lot of lenience based on his criminal history. Speaking of his lawyer, that's the main topic of this video. You see, my boy Steve, crime specialist, had a chance to interview the lawyer amongst a gaggle of other reporters outside the courthouse. But before we get to Steve's hard-hitting questions, let's take a look at Opoku's lawyer, Jordan Weiss. Oh, how'd that get in there? Look, internet culture and this guy's general appearance behooves me to play that little game with you of just the tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels. Alright? Get a sense of humor. Take it away, Steve. Is your client aware of what's going on right now with regards to this whole court process and how it's working? He is, yes. As I, as I explained last time, uh, he, he's definitely, to use the legal terminology, fit to stand trial and is aware of as you've put it, everything that's going on within the court process. Hmm. Fit to stand trial, you say? That's gonna sound a little strange when it's juxtaposed with his series of statements later. And keep an eye on the guy standing behind Mr. Wise, because it appears he may have had to pull an all-nighter and is fighting some sort of post-nasal drip right now. <laughs> Let's continue. And he's unemployed, right? He doesn't work construction. I'm not able to. I'm not. A, I'm not able to speak about any specifics about him. I'm sorry. I unfortunately I can't speak to his employment status. But that's what a good lawyer is all about, right? Weasel words. Is Joe an appropriate? Oh, uh, well, no. Joe is not an appropriate place for my client. Okay, so it, I know it sounds like he says, "Is Joe an appropriate?" Uh, it, it's jail. This guy's got a speech impediment. And. I'm not going to speak specifically about my client's situation in terms of his mental health status. I'm not going to speak specifically about my client's mental health status. There's been a lot of speculation that the allegations may suggest some mental illness, understandably, but obviously I can't speak as to the specifics about my client. But what I, what I really want to bring home, if, if I might, is just as a very, in a very general way, uh, it costs far more to incarcerate and jail the mentally ill than it does to treat them. And I've edited this interview. He makes this point a couple of times. I'm cutting all that out because it has nothing to do with Steve, and that's that's where the gold is. And that's not even considering treating treating mentally ill can, in the vast majority of cases, prevent potential acts of criminality where you know members of the public may or may not be attacked. So aside from the human cost, which is real, uh, I ask you to consider and consider very carefully that it costs far more, far more to jail 
the mentally ill than it does so to treat saying, them. you're saying that he's got a mental, he's well, I'm not, a mental <laughs> crisis? Or otherwise, why would you be saying this? Well, I think Mr. Weiss's approach here is all obfuscation. It seems like he wants to position mental health as an option to pursue in the public's view anyway. But I think that it's the things he's not talking about that are really concerning him. Well, it, it, because it's a tragedy that, that occurs time and time again in the courts and because the allegations the allegations are suggestive of somebody potentially suffering from an untreated mental illness. I can't speak specifically about so my client. That's right, Steve. Call him out on his BS. What, what well, I can't speak... I'm sorry, sir. I just can't speak specifically about my my client. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not allowed to. If I could, of course I would. But you're advocating for better mental health. Absolutely. Well, no, I'm... He doesn't know what he's advocating for. What I'm advocating for and what I think most people would agree with is aside from the human cost, the tragic human cost. <sighs> he's on this shit again. Where the mentally ill suffer because they're incarcerated untreated, where the public potentially suffers being victimized potentially, aside from the human cost, which in and of itself is tragic, the actual cost is the real cost in terms of how much we pay all collectively as taxpayers. We pay far more to house the mentally ill. Man, he really has a hate boner on for incarceration. I mean, I guess it makes sense. He's acting as a criminal defense lawyer right now, but sounds like he doesn't want any of his precious money to go towards incarceration. Hoy vey. In a shiny, brand new detention center like the South Detention Center, it does look very shiny and new. Very nice. Then we would to treat him. With all due respect, if he's not suffering from a mental health issue, why are we even talking about this? Because he wants to keep it open as an option, Steve. Because the allegations are suggestive of it, which is which I've said repeatedly, but I'm not I'm not permitted to speak about my client's specific who's, situation. Who's the allegations are subject, suggestive of, of that. Steve's seeing that veil slip a little bit, I think. Well, I think most people would agree that the allegations would suggest some form of mental illness. I, I, I think most people would agree with that, un unless I'm mistaken. So uh, someone who's throwing feces has a mental health issue? Oh my god, how could you even? I would, I, I, I didn't say it categorically. I said that if someone is throwing feces at persons... Feces? <laughs> who's throwing feces? I don't need permission to be here, do I? <laughs> Seriously? Oh, oh right, I forgot. Randomly, without any rhyme or reason, that to me would be strongly suggestive of a mental health issue because there would be no animosity between the person and the victim. Could it be motivated by a hatred towards a particular group of individuals? I Mr. Saw... Rice, can you uh, tell us anything about his background, perhaps? Is he a I, Canadian citizen I can't, or I can't on speak, a student visa? I can't speak about his background, but I can, I can assure you that uh, the case has nothing to do with immigration. You alt-right bigot. The, uh, I, got, I got a look at him in court and that video surveillance picture of the, the person with the uh, construction helmet on appears to be him. So if in fact those allegations well, you, are... You should tell the Crown. You'd make right. a pretty good witness for them. <laughs> okay, yuck it up, Mr. Wise. I think Steve hit a nerve there. But if, if those are, are correct, how do you defend the defensible, indefensible, or something like that? Well, first of all, I'm not going to, I'm not going to assume that the photographs accurately depict my client. Ooh, still keeping that wasn't me option open. But she got me on the counter. Wasn't me. I'm, I'm not prepared to Fair say enough. that. If you are, Fair enough. you know, maybe you can give a statement to the police and be called to testify. I'm not, I'm not being funny. Yes, you are trying to be funny. You're, you're trying to distract from the question that was just asked. I, I think that the danger is, and I, I, I urge you all, the danger is drawing conclusions like that prematurely. What, that he looks like the fucking picture? Come on. I think everybody's drawn the conclusion that he's the dude in the photo as he's been identified. Because, as we all, well, it's a conclusion. Observation. Uh, other people would di disagree with you. <laughs> you tell him, Steve. Well-meaning people would this. I'm not here to argue with you, and I don't want to argue with you. The point being... <laughs> the presumption of innocence is the bulwark of our society and the bulwark of every free and democratic society. Well, that's the first thing I've agreed with him saying so far. And I am respecting the presumption of innocence as I urge everyone to do by not drawing the conclusions that you've drawn, even though it might, you know, make for a good soundbite. Why don't you just call him a dirty smear merchant while you're at it? Because the time will come for a trial in court where evidence is heard. The time will come where a determination can be made 
how on earth can defense counsel, as you've put it, defend the indefensible, but that time is not now. Hopefully you'll be able to use less weasel words when that time comes. We really, we really want to have a bail hearing as soon as possible. All individuals have a right to reasonable bail. Unfortunately, there was limited availability. We were looking to do this next week. We were looking to do this as soon as possible. Unfortunately, schedules were such that it couldn't be heard until the week following, but nothing ought to be concluded from that. We wanted to go next week, and we, we would have been ready to go next week. Are you sure about that? Because it sounds like you're kind of waffling between mental health and mistaken identity. Do you, do you, can I ask you one more, one more question? Sure, as you, long as it's not about what the picture looks like. Steve, don't you take any of that crap from him. Well, well forget the can picture. Can we just leave that alone, please? Yes, could we just not talk about the surveillance photos anymore? It's very damaging to my client's case. You're talking about, uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're talking about mental health issues. Yes, I not am. Not knowing yet or not being prepared to say that your guy has a mental health crisis. Not so, being prepared to say that, that's so, right. If he's not, do you not think that you're doing a disservice to those that suffer from mental health cr crises when you as you assume that because a, a bucket of feces is thrown on somebody? Hope oh, Steve just said feces too. God damn, this lawyer's speech impediment is contagious. That they must be suffering from a mental health crisis. Well, I'm what I'm. I'm not assuming anything. Uh, I'm not at liberty to speak about my client specifically. Uh, I've said to all of you what many have concluded in terms of looking at the allegations that a person who would do something as terrible as what's alleged to be have done either would have some terrible personal animosity toward the victims themselves but in this case as, I, as far as i understand the allegations the victims are entirely unknown to the suspect so that's not the possibility so the only the possibility that makes any sense at all to me is regrettably the person is suffering from a mental illness and regrettably the person isn't receiving the treatment that he ought to receive. Uh, but there is that possibility of uh, hatred towards a group that nobody seems to want to talk about until Steve comes with the logical follow-up question. I think that's the conclusion that, that most right-minded persons would draw. That's the conclusion I'm drawing. All the victims Asian? Should we read anything into that? No. No, you shouldn't read anything into it. Yes, yeah, so I'm really trying to avoid that whole Asian question. Thanks. Yet again, even amongst a gaggle of lesser reporters asking really dumb questions, Steve brings it home. And that's why he's a crime specialist. Beyond that, there's really nothing much to say about this case until December 18th, but I will be watching and waiting like a kid for Christmas Day, unlike Jordan's kids. Sorry. But until then, thanks for checking in on this story, gang. And please take a moment to look at my links below for my social media and other ways you can support the channel. But I've been your boy, Richard Rizzo. Peace out.